Oh, oh gone. Okay. I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. Today I want to continue my series for beginners. You've just bought your first snake. Uh, my first video had a tremendous response and some good discussion in the comments section uh, which has given me some ideas for actually extending this series a little bit further than I intended. Uh, but today's video is about that first all-important feeding. You've got your snake home and you've put it into a small tub and kept it in a dark quiet place for the last two or three days and it's now time to try and feed it. When you first buy your snake it will have already eaten for the breeder. It probably has three, four, five decent meals behind it. It's already established, it's already eating very well and then all of a sudden you get it home and it won't eat for you. Okay, so this video is designed to help you get over that first all-important feeding. It is not a video on how to get newborn hatchlings feeding for new breeders. This is for a first-time snake keeper who has bought a snake and is bringing it home. It's not a video for how to feed your snakes for someone that is experienced, although I do feed all my snakes in exactly the same way and use the same protocols with pretty much the same results with the exception that obviously the bigger ball pythons are much more powerful and they can take you by surprise as I said if we do these feedings right and use the snakes super senses they can't help themselves and they will eat sometimes ferociously okay I'm not going to feed live although I do feed live I'm not going to show it on the video but I am going to show you what I consider to be an appropriate size meal for your hatchling ball python and the reason why I select that size of prey so let's just have a look this is a little hopper mouse or slightly bigger than hop hopper mouse it's not an adult mouse not fully grown yet but that is uh, quite easy for a hatchling ball python to tackle I don't like to give mice uh, I prefer to start them on rats uh, it has more nutrition and they grow faster but very occasionally a hatchling will require to be fed mice it won't actually start on rats 95% of mine do uh, but some of them refuse and actually do need mice and that's an appropriate size mouse do not feed a live mouse of this size to your hatchling without supervision this mouse is perfectly capable of defending itself and biting back so if you do feed live I would recommend that you make sure that your snake strikes aggressively coils and that the mouse is not in a position to bite your snake back once it feeds that's an appropriate size mouse but I don't generally feed mice we have three different sizes of rat here this is a pinky rat you'll see that it is a few days old it hasn't opened its eyes yet and has no fur this is not appropriate for your hatchling for a number of reasons if you feed live these pinky rats will get cold quite quickly and they'll have no heat signature and be less attractive to your hatchling ball python they also don't move around very much and they have no fur so they don't have quite as strong a scent. Once your ball python is established they will eat pinky rats. Uh, some of them will eat pinky rats from the get-go but there is no reason to feed them a rat of this size. This hopper rat is the perfect size for your hatchling ball python and you might say that's too big. No it's not. Uh, they will eat this quite comfortably it has the advantage that it is already fairly active it has fur so it has a strong scent and because it has fur it stays warm so it stays from a heat signature perspective it stays attractive to your hatchling ball pythons this is the size of rat 
that I would feed. And this, generally speaking, is safe. It's not going to bite your hatchling ball python back. That's the size of rat that I would be feeding my hatchlings. This rat, this weaned rat, is actually a little bit too big. Um, I think your hatchling ball python would ha actually have a go if it was hungry and would probably manage to eat this. But the problem with this is it is a little bit too large. It's a bit of a mouthful for your hatchling. But the biggest danger here is that this rat will bite back and can be a danger to your snake. So this is a little bit too big. Uh, but as your hatchling grows, they will easily tackle a rat of this size. So too big for your hatchling for the first few meals, but definitely the right size for a hatchling that has had a few meals and has started to grow. But again, the danger of live feeding is that these rats will bite back. They will defend themselves. And for that reason, I'm going to focus primarily on feeding frozen thawed. Logistically, it's easier. You can always have a stock in the freezer. Um, it's very difficult to breed enough rats to have an appropriate size of rat all the time. They are dirty, they poo and pee, as that one has all over me. Uh, but the scent is very attractive to ball pythons when they do that. So of all the sizes of rodents that we have in here, these, this rat and this mouse, are the appropriate size, they have fur, a nice scent and they're quite active. This mouse will bite back, this rat probably won't and this is safe to feed but we're going to focus on feeding frozen thawed. So let's use our little hatchling that has just had a few meals and is newly settled into, in this case it's grow on top, but whatever housing arrangements you have for your snake. It's settled in, now's the time to try to feed it and I think it's very important that we have a positive experience because it's very easy to get discouraged. So we're actually going to use some of the snake's super senses some of the adaptions that a snake has to make it a successful predator and we're going to use those super senses to trigger it into eating. If we do this right the snake can hardly help itself. So let's take a look at this little guy here. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's flicking its tongue. It's actually tasting the air and this is a super sense of a snake. It uses an organ in the roof of its mouth called the Jacobson's organ. So as it detects scent particles in the air on its tongue and draws it back into its mouth, this super sense is what enables your snake to figure out what's going on in the world around it for considerable distances without actually seeing what's going on. Uh, you can think of this as being the best tracker dog sense in the world. It has sense of smell far greater than any tracker dog. And what we're going to use for this animal as a primer before we feed it is to use that super sense of smell. There are no rats or rodents in this snake room and the moment that we bring a rodent into the room all these snakes are immediately aware of its presence. Their sense of smell is that good. That's how your snake knows and will be waiting at the front of the tub when you're ready to feed it. These guys need about 15 minutes or so in order to get themselves worked up. It's like somebody cooking in the kitchen and the smell of great food wafting through the house makes you hungry. Same with the snakes, but it happens much, much quicker. So we're going to use scent in order to stimulate a feeding response. The next adaption that this guy has, and you won't be able to see it on this small snake unless you look very, very closely. You can see on the 
snout, a number of holes just above the mouth. And these are heat pits. They're very, very sensitive to temperature. The prey of these animals in the wild is rodents. They hunt primarily in the dark. And in order to see in the dark, they can see a heat signature. You've all seen the Predator film where the Predator is seeing in infrared in the dark. These guys are even more sensitive than that. So once they track down prey using scent, they can detect its nearby presence with a heat signature. So we're going to use a heat signature as the next sense in order to generate a feeding response from our new hatchling. And the third sense that we're going to use, these animals as you can see have quite good vision and movement is a very important stimulant for producing a feeding response. So what we're going to do is to use scent, we're going to use a heat signature and we're going to use movement at an appropriate time. These animals are nocturnal and would normally be hunting at night and I'm not suggesting you feed in the dark, uh, don't do that. But certainly feed at night with the lights on. You will see that the snake becomes active at night and is roaming around its tub looking for food. So what we're going to do is to feed at night. We're going to generate a scent in the snake room to uh, stimulate the snake's feeding response. We're going to warm the prey up or use live prey. Uh, but primarily we're going to warm our frozen thawed prey up to give it a heat signature and then hopefully when we open the tub the snake is primed and ready to eat and a simple wiggle in front of its face will generate an immediate strike coil and that's the job done your snake will handle the rest all by itself so we're going to use the super senses of this snake against it in order to make feeding almost inevitable if we do this right the snake won't be able to help itself and it will eat so let me show you how we do that. Okay, today is feeding day, uh, but it's early in the morning. We're not going to be feeding yet. Uh, what I'd like to just illustrate is some of the signals that the snakes will give to you that they're ready to eat. So this is daylight, it's in the morning, and these are nocturnal snakes. So let's have a look at what they're up to in the morning. And you can see this little leopard clown that we've been following tucked up at the back of the tub, completely inactive. It is aware that we've opened the tub, but this snake is fast asleep. This snake does not want to eat right now. It's not a good time to feed it. Uh, you can see that it's coiled up and it just wants to sleep. Normal behaviour for a ball python during the day. Let's take a look at the one underneath. Same thing. Curled up at the back of the tub. This one is aware we've opened the tub, it's awake. But this snake is not ready to feed. Let's take a look at a few more, just to confirm that that's a common behaviour for these snakes. There you go. Curled up. Uh, the back of the tub completely inactive. The snake is asleep. There's another one doing exactly the same. It would appear that this is a fairly common behaviour throughout all the snakes in my collection. Let's just have a look at a couple more. There you go, exactly the same thing. These snakes are all doing exactly the same thing and they're not giving me any clues, any signals, any indication that they want to feed. This is not a good time to feed your baby ball python. And just so you can compare the adult snakes right there at the back are behaving in exactly the same way. These are adult males, they're fast asleep, completely disinterested in 
anything that's happening around them. This is a female. Big breeder female, this one. And again, tucked up at the back of the tub, fast asleep. This would not be a good time to feed these animals either. Let's have a look at this one. This one happens to be at the front of the tub, curled up a little bit around the water bowl, perhaps cooling, but again, fast asleep. No activity at all. So the adults are behaving exactly the same way as the hatchlings. Okay, so my frozen rats come in packs and I keep a stock in the freezer because uh, it's very convenient and I have more than one snake to feed tonight but we're focused on the beginner snake and you may only have one snake so we are going to feed hatchlings and this is the size of uh, these are African soft furs actually 20 to 30 grams a new hatchling will eat that very easily I'm going to defrost them all uh, but if you only have one snake you'll only need to defrost one of them uh, so what I'm going to do is to allow these to defrost for about half an hour just so they come unstuck from the pack and then I'm going to cut them open and put them into a bucket so that they don't sit in the plastic bag in their own juices and get soggy. So as soon as I'm able to get them out of the bag I'll take them out of the bag and let them defrost in a bucket. But we're in the kitchen, we're not in the snake room and I'm not going to allow them to defrost in the snake room. I don't want the scent in the snake room sitting around for hours and hours before they get fed. My snakes need about 15 minutes uh, of scenting the room before they're ready to eat and I'll show you that later on and we're actually going to use a couple of live rats and some bedding put into the room and you'll see how quickly the snakes get switched on. So no need to defrost these in the snake room, in fact that could be counterproductive. So I'm going to defrost them in the kitchen and I'm going to take them out of the plastic bags as soon as I'm able to. So I have what I need and this one is already loose. So what I'm going to do is to just cut the bag open here with a pair of scissors and I'm going to put them straight into a bucket and I'm going to let them defrost in the bucket. So I'm going to leave them to defrost here inside that bucket. So we're preparing for feeding uh, but we're not actually in the snake room yet. Okay it's early evening and if we have a look at the hatchling rack over here you can immediately already see that there is a difference in the snake's behaviour. The snakes are moving around, they're at the front of the tubs, they are now active because it's evening. See all the snakes here all moving at the front of their tubs. So this is now a good time to feed. I haven't even introduced the scent of rats into the room yet but we already need to take care when we open the tub because as you can see the snake is right there. So this morning the snake was fast asleep, curled at the back of the tub, giving me no indication that it was interested in feeding at all. You'll see that this is now a different snake. This is now a great time to feed, so what I'm going to do... Can you show me your watch? So people can know that it's... 718 at night it is dark outside it's been dark for about 20 minutes so what I'm going to do now the African soft furred rats that I prepared earlier are now nicely defrosted they're not warmed up yet but they are defrosted and I'm bringing them into the snake room now so that the scent can let all these snakes know that it's feeding time they're all already awake and I don't think they need much encouragement but we're going to leave these here for about 15 minutes. I don't let them thaw out in the snake room because I don't want the scent of rats to be in the snake room all day and the snakes get used to the scent. It doesn't take very long to get these snakes switched on once they're active at night. So we're going to leave these for about 15 minutes and if you feed live you will have been down to your local pet shop and probably 
ball to mouse and this video is meant for those people that only have one snake so you'll probably bring one mouse or one rat back to the house or you will have defrosted one rat or one mouse and the same principle applies if you buy your rats from a pet shop ask your pet shop to throw in a bunch of bedding as well dirty bedding from the rats or the mouse because that smells wonderful now these rats are not necessarily going to be fed to the snakes but the scent of live rats permeates through the room very very quickly and all these snakes will get switched on very quickly so I'm going to leave these rats in here for now not necessarily feed them we're going to concentrate on feeding frozen thawed to our snakes but we'll come back in about 15 minutes. Alright. 7.28, just a few minutes later. That's all the time that it needs. So what we're going to do now that we've scented the room and we're using the snake's amazing sense of smell to get them switched on, we're going to do heat signature and movement. So these rats here are going to be put into hot water. Uh, hand hot water. We don't want to cook them uh, but we definitely need to give a strong heat signature. So let me just go put warm water into this bucket. Okay, all right, so we've got the rats now in warm water and let's not make feeding any more difficult than it needs to be. I just leave them in warm water. They haven't been soaking in there for very long. So, heat signature. But the important thing to remember is heat signature, heat signature. We need to keep these bits away from the heat signature of the rat so that the snake doesn't get confused and bite the wrong thing. So we're going to use tongs and we're going to pick up our rats using tongs to keep our hands away and if necessary we're going to open the tubs with a snake hook so that we're not getting our hands too close to the tub. Now I do have one snake that is still in quarantine in one of those small tubs that I showed you in the first video. That snake has been in quarantine for a couple of weeks now and it has eaten one live rat pup for me. But tonight we're going to try it for the first time with frozen thawed. So let's go outside the snake room for a little while. So here we are in my quarantine rack and here is the snake that we are going to feed or try to feed for the first time with frozen thawed. And you'll notice that I've scented the tub with a rat in just the same way as we did the snake room. So what I'm going to do with this guy here is to see whether he will take a frozen thawed for the first time. So I'm opening the lid. Come on, take it.
There we go. That's the first time this snake has ever taken frozen thought. And you saw that the final strike was generated by movement. So that's a success on frozen thought. This is not the way your snake is going to respond every time. This is not the snake's forever home. This is not its forever response. This snake was extremely aggressive with live prey. It obviously wasn't sure about frozen thought. But now that it has eaten frozen thawed for the first time, this snake will now switch on to frozen thawed and will eat quite aggressively next time. That's a success. Okay, so we've converted a new snake that's only had actually four meals, three at the shop, one for me, all live rat pups, and we've already converted it to frozen thawed. There'll be no looking back for that snake now. I can feed that snake frozen thawed anytime I like once they get used to eating frozen thawed and they know it's good uh, they usually will switch on and eat anything. The first snake that we're going to work with is the leopard clown male. This is the tub here so what I'm going to do is to open the tub from underneath so that if I open like this my hand is going to provide a heat signature and movement that the snake may mistake for food. So what I'm going to do is to take the prey Open the tub. And close the tub. Try this with the second snake. This is the crystal that refused to eat when it went into a bigger tub. But it's now in a smaller tub. We had a look at the two snakes that I showed in my previous video, one of which did not want to eat when it was in a bigger tub, but immediately switched on when it was in a smaller tub. You can see their reaction, that didn't take too much coaxing. These other snakes are already switched on to frozen thawed. So let's have a bash with some of these guys. Let's have a look at some of my earlier hatchlings. Uh, some of these are several months old. Uh, let's feed those as well since I already prepared the food. Let's have a look and see how those snakes respond once they're accustomed to being fed this way. Let's see how they behave when we stimulate them the same way. So this one doesn't want to eat frozen thaw. keyed in on my hand not on the rat so you you have to be careful of that this is the normal feeding response you can expect from your hatchling once it's settled into its new home 
they have no problem at all feeding. In fact, you need to be careful that you don't get bitten. This one will. Okay, are we bored yet of watching snakes all behaving exactly the same way? You'll notice that one of those snakes did refuse frozen thawed and I spent no time at all trying to coax it. If it hadn't eaten, it wouldn't worry me, it would go for another week and we'd try again next week. But I did stick a live wrap up into the tub and that snake ate immediately. Surprisingly, after its response to the frozen thawed, uh, it took the live prey within seconds. Uh, we will continue to offer that snake frozen thawed and sooner or later it will switch on to frozen thawed. I have no doubt once these snakes get established and start eating they will eat pretty much anything. I want to show you adult feeding just so that you can compare with the hatchlings okay. Let's do these ones I think that's the one try to eat them. Oh god! I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! This one? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, she me. There we go. Okay, this is the morning after the night before, and you will see that the snakes have now settled back into their tubs. They are actually now fast asleep again after last night's mayhem. Uh, so there is absolutely no reason whatsoever not to feed your snakes in their home tubs. There's no reason to take them out to feed them in another tub. They do not get food aggressive and bite at everything that comes anywhere near the tub. They are responding to the stimulus that we provided last night. That stimulus is no longer there and the snakes are now back to their normal calm, sleepy behaviour. I wouldn't recommend handling your snakes for at least 24 hours after they have eaten. If you're gentle you can clean their tubs uh, if it's necessary to do so, but generally give them a day or two to digest the food just to make sure that they don't regurgitate. It's a natural flight response of a snake that's just eaten to regurgitate its food in order to escape, but obviously that's a bad thing for our captive snakes. We don't want to do that, uh, so we need to avoid it. It's also quite damaging for the snake as well, and it can actually be harmful to the snake's health if a snake regurgitates. Doesn't happen very often, but just something to watch out for. Don't handle your snake for uh, one or two days after it's eaten. Give it a chance to digest that meal, or at least partially digest that meal, and then you're safe to handle it again. Okay guys, the next topic I'm going to cover is again a beginner topic. We're going to look at alternative housing for snakes. I am biased towards tubs and rack systems. They work extremely well for ball pythons, but they're not the only way to keep ball pythons. So we're going to look at terrariums, how to set them up, uh, the good and the bad of terrariums, some of the common mistakes to avoid with terrariums, and we'll also look at a selection of hides and behaviours of snakes as they grow. Uh, your terrarium might be set up for a baby snake and may not be suitable for an adult because they do change their behaviour with age, as most animals do. So we'll look at that and we'll also look at what to do if your snake is growing up and then suddenly decides it doesn't want to eat. 
we're going to look at some of the solutions to that some of the things that you can try but generally speaking that is actually a perfectly natural thing for uh, ball python to do and I do not stress if my snakes don't eat if they don't eat for a month I don't stress too much sooner or later they will eat when they're ready and it does them no harm whatsoever that's a very hard thing for a newcomer snake keeper to get over uh, everybody is accustomed to feeding their pet cat or their pet mouse or whatever pet you keep uh, gets fed every day not so with snakes uh, they get fed once a week or even less my adults get fed every two weeks and sometimes they won't eat for a month two months three months that's typical of snakes it's nothing to worry about okay guys so we will extend this series and cover in more depth some alternative housing arrangements for your snakes so in the meantime thanks for watching don't forget to share like and subscribe oh and don't forget to jump down in the comments and ask questions and make comments about the way that you keep your snakes I'm always interested in your feedback I'm always up for answering questions based on my experience so see you next time